have a solution for any device. E-Edition is free for subscribers or just $7.99 a month. The Bakersfield Californian. We're everywhere and anytime. Subscribe today. Bakersfield.com. Roadrunner Rundown on Bakersfield.com and the CSUB Roadrunners Digital Network. Live from the Dignity Health Studios in downtown Bakersfield, California. Welcome into another edition of Roadrunner Rundown, the official program, CSUB Roadrunner Athletics. Corey Costello, we did thanks so much for joining us on another edition of the program as we got a good show today as normal, but we are going to uh, going to talk a lot of baseball on today's program, the Western Athletic Conference Tournament, just, uh, well, just about a week away, and so we're going to be speaking with head baseball coach Bill Kernan for several reasons. A, the Roadrunners are in. They have punched their tickets into the Western Athletic Conference Tournament, and so we'll talk with him about that. Also, he announced his retirement last week, so we'll talk with Coach Kernan about that and kind of his future plan so we have him coming up in the next couple of segments we'll talk some baseball we'll talk some retirement we'll talk some post-retirement plans with coach Kernan as well so that's coming up on the show and also on the program today we're going to be speaking with one of our new head or new assistant coaches that is uh that is Jerry Cleary he is a new assistant with the uh, men's soccer program matter of fact he is a national championship winning coach at the NAIA level he is now on the CESUB Roadrunner men's soccer staff we'll talk with him about uh, not only his job here in Bakersfield but also a couple things things coming up for soccer. They've got their Brains of Bakersfield event, which is coming up a little bit later this week, and also they have their summer and all sports camps coming up uh, this summer as well in the month of June into, into July. So we'll talk with him about that, how you can get your youngsters registered for CSUB soccer camp or CSUB all sports camp. So we'll talk with him about that coming up on the show as well. And of course, highlights and uh, a special edition of Corey Visits as we had a very successful 42nd annual CSUB Athletics Spring Barbecue. And so I took you behind the scenes to what else? The food. And uh, we got a little behind the scenes look at how those 2,600 plus meals were prepared for uh, you, the fans. And thanks so much for all the people that showed up to the event on uh, on th- last Thursday night at the Icardo Center. Time to get to the highlights. We want to start with baseball with the big news this week started on the field, off the field as head coach Bill Kernan announced that after six seasons he was going to hang him up at the end of this season. He addressed a packed house of media and supporters on Thursday. Um... I'm sure you've anticipated by now that there's a huge but at the end of this introduction. Um, And there is. And uh, that is that uh, today I'm announcing my retirement as the head coach at CSUB, effective July 1st. Um, It's not for a negative reason. It's not for a bad reason. It's for a happy reason. Uh, Sometimes you are supposed to have mixed feelings about these things, and I always wondered if I would, and I do. There's a sadness involved when you put this much into something and then you're going to be separated from it. It's, it's, um, it, has a, it has a very tough element to it, most particularly the guys you see standing along the walls around you here. I'm going to go back to New York. Uh, I'm going to go back as a director and writer in, in theater and film again, uh, which a lot of people find bizarre. And why would you do that if you love baseball? And I don't have an explanation. Uh, except that I love it, and, and uh, I, I've got a little bit of breath left and a little bit of energy left, uh, and I need to use that if I'm going to do something because um, I, I never wanted to die on a baseball field with a lineup card in my hand. And that was head coach Bill Kernan earlier this week as he announced his retirement effective July 1 following the end of the 2014 baseball season. Still plenty of work to do on the baseball field. We'll talk with Coach Kernan about that and much more coming up in the next couple segments of this program. So stick around. But uh, on to the baseball field, the runners responding in a positive fashion to Kernan's announcement. Winning Friday night's game, let's head to Saturday night's game against New Mexico State out at Hartfield. Uh, Miles Jones with an early RBI double giving Bakersfield a 1-0 lead his chance Guspeth scores in the first inning but that lead wouldn't last too long as uh, well the Aggies uh, do what they do they hit and they bounce back as they're going to score a run on this sacrifice fly as uh, the Aggies 
get the uh, get the run as uh, Blackstone with the sacrifice. Taylor Neuer uh, then coming up for New Mexico State. Tying the game here, and then it's Neuer singling through the right side for the Aggies as they're going to take the lead. And more than that, they're going to take a 4-1 to lead after the fifth as here's the second run score in there. And then a 4-1 lead, and the fifth in the bottom of the sixth. Runners with the bases loaded. Allen Gwynn delivering a sacrifice R fly RBI. So it is going to be 4-2 to two and scoring in standing up easily. And so the runners make it 4-2. And then it got dark, and then it got windier. It just kept on blowing. That would factor in later. Seventh inning for Miles Jones under the glove at second base. Gusbeth would score again, and it's a 4-3 to three ball game. But runners, however, strand the runner at third. They only get one in the inning. Heading to the bottom of the ninth, runners down 4-3. Garrett Pierce on an 0-2 count right here is going to single to the right side, and then it gets interesting. Then the ball is going to be thrown into the Bakersfield dugout. See the ball trickling off screen there. So Pierce is awarded second. He's now in scoring position. New Mexico State head coach uh, Rocky Ward not agreeing with the call, thinking there was interference, but no dice on that argument. So the tying run aboard, it's Ross Huff. This is what legends are made of. RBI double down the line on a hanging breaking ball. Pierce scores, and we are tied. Alan Gwynn now at the plate, winning run at second with uh, two gone in the ninth inning, and uh, call the cops. Robbery right here as Kevin Corper saves the game for the Aggies. No score in the 10th and the 11th. The Aggies put one on the board, so Bakersfield down 5-4. Solomon Williams in the 11th, putting one in the gap. They shift him one way. He hits the other. A leadoff double, and the tying run is aboard for the Roadrunners. Then Miles Jones at the plate. Check swing to the right side. Enough, though, to move Williams over to third base. So now the tying run is aboard yet again here in the 11th. And then this ball popped up into center field. That will be deep enough. And the Roadrunners will tie the game in the bottom of the 11th at, uh, at six apiece, not, or five apiece. Nothing for either team in the 12th. The 13th, the leadoff home run for New Mexico State puts the runners down 6-5. Then an 0-2 count, Solomon Williams, the leadoff hitter of the Bakersfield 13. Giddy up, the answering home run as he has a solo blast as well and we are tied at six here in the bottom of the 13th inning so Jones or make that Williams responds to the leadoff home run by the Aggies with one of his own he is pumped then Miles Jones coming up to the plate a single for Bakersfield coming up as that would put the winning run on base as Jones was just charming in extra innings as he hits this one into right center for a base hit as well. Winning run aboard. So Bakersfield in business here in the bottom of 13th. They've tied it. Garrett Pierce now at the plate. He'll lay down the textbook book bunt. Jones goes to second. Pierce is out at first. Jones in scoring position. That brings up Alan Gwynn, who was robbed of the game winner back in the ninth. This time with one on and one out, hits what looks like to be a game-ending double play, but no, it's kicked into center field. Around third base comes Miles Jones and Bakersfield. It's going to win it 7-6. to six. They were down on three separate occasions in extra innings, and Alan Gwynn leaves them the chase into center field and gets the Gatorade shower and the dog pile as well as the runners conclude what was one of the best games I've ever played. Blackstone disappointed at shortstop. He kicked that one away to hand the game to the Roadrunners. Bakersfield, though, claimed the series with a 7-6 win. So this was Friday night's score. The runners won Friday night 13-1, and uh, they mercy ruled the, the Aggies in seven innings. Then on Taylor Aikenhead, by the way, threw a three-hitter in that game, had a, had a uh, no-hitter going through five complete innings. Then the one we just saw there, 7-6, Bakersfield with the victory on Saturday in 13 innings, which meant the Roadrunners won the series two games to, well, just one, unfortunately, on Sunday. New Mexico Mexico State came to hit. Runners pitching struggle a little bit. New Mexico State uh, wins the third game 19-7. to So uh, Bakersfield not getting the sweep, but they did win the series. And more importantly, the series victory put the Roadrunners into the Western Athletic Conference. Here's the standings right now. Now, mind you, Grand Canyon in second place, but ineligible for the conference, uh, the conference tournament. So right now, Sacramento State, Utah Valley, the one two seats. Bakersfield and Pan Am tied at uh, for the four seed. Pan Am does have the tie 
tiebreaker. They beat Bakersfield earlier this year. So currently the runners sitting in the fourth seed, uh, but uh, there's still plenty of games to play. Utah Valley will be at Sacramento State this weekend, so some chances the Wolverines could drop a few games. Texas Pan American, they will be uh, at Northern Colorado, who is 4-20 and in conference play. So not to, not to still some, some stuff to be moved around, but that's where they stand. Bakersfield, though, good news, is uh, solidly in the Western Athletic Conference Tournament. So the upcoming games for Bakersfield will be on the road at Seattle University this weekend and uh, Thursday and Friday at 6 o'clock, Saturday at noon. It's a Thursday, Friday, Saturday series this weekend and uh, playing at Bannerwood Park and uh, the runners and Red Hawks who are fighting for their lives. They're about fifth right now. So the runners could see these guys again if they end up in the uh, in the three seed in the tournament, which actually was what happened last year as well. The runners, remember, uh, played San Jose State final weekend of the year, then went and played San Jose State in the first round of the conference tournament. So here it is. Uh, the runners will be at the conference tournament in Mesa, Arizona, Wednesday, May 21st. The new Wrigley West, the brand new spring training facility of the Chicago Cubs, should be a great venue and a great tournament. Ticket information available online at our website at GoRunners.com. So that was uh, Roadrunners baseball. Let's head to softball real quick. Bakersfield wrapping up their tournament. The Roadrunners wrapping up their season as they went to the Western Athletic Conference Tournament in Seattle. They fell to Utah Valley 4-1 to on Thursday, and uh, then on Friday, the runners' season ends as, uh, fittingly enough, they had so many one-run games this year, they lose another one, 2-1, to one, ending their season. Utah Valley, by the way, went on to win the tournament. They went 4-0. They'll represent the WAC in the NCAA Regionals. One more note, uh, CSUB track and field this weekend. Matter of fact, it's underway Wednesday at uh, the Western Athletic Conference Championships, and that will be held at uh, at uh, the uh, at Orem, Utah, at uh, Utah Valley, and the WAC Outdoor Championships, and uh, runners uh, Wednesday through Saturday. A lot of good road runners expected to do some things, not only in the sprinting categories and distance, but also uh, the field events expected to be huge for Bakersfield. We'll be keeping an eye on that, but I think some of the guests we've had recently will be uh, should be pretty solid in the. Um, in the track and field championship. So we'll be keeping an eye on that as well. So there you go. We want to get now to a, uh, those are the highlights. And, of course, more to come next week as we get ready for the Western Athletic Conference Baseball Tournament. But this past week was the uh, 42nd annual Spring Barbecue. We talked about it a lot on the show leading up to the event. Well, I got a chance to, take, of course, take our Roadrunner Rundown cameras behind the ropes and around the barbecues because we all want to know how the food is being prepared as we take you on this week's edition of Corey Visits. Ah, the spring barbecue, a Bakersfield tradition dating back 42 years. And of course, the Road on a Rundown cameras were around the food just to see how meals for nearly 3,000 people get prepared in just a few short hours. And we're here at the 42nd Annual CSUB Athletic Spring Barbecue and uh, Gary Ricardo with us. Head chef, uh, how many years have you been head chef at the barbecue? Head chef I've been since 1995. Previous to that, I cooked behind my father for 20 years. So it's been a while. So you've, have you been with this event since the beginning? Yes, we started out at the police shooting range, moved to the fairgrounds, and then I took it over, took it, I mean, out here to the mm -hmm. campus in 2002, I think. Wow. <laughs> Can't remember exactly, <laughs> but... <laughs> Um, now, what are the what I guess are some of the keys to get keep all your guys working in the same you know pace and obviously try to feed all these three thousand people expected? Well, we run eight barbecues. That's the main thing. We start the chicken very very early so we can get ahead on that because the chicken is the big draw out here, and uh, these guys have been with me for years and years, so they know what they're doing. They do it right, and we try to make it as consistent as we can every year. Now, we did switch to Harris Ranch Beef here a couple of years ago, and that was probably the best move we could have ever made because it's top-notch quality every every time, every steak. It seems like you have a, a crew that has been with you year in and year out. I see the same cooks. Is it almost like, is it like a waiting list to get on this crew? I mean, people calling you up saying, hey, you got a spot I want to cook at the barbecue. Well, we do. We have a waiting list in my office, and when somebody has to go out because of a wedding, because of uh, illness, because of some other thing, yes, we have somebody to plug in the place immediately. 
What's uh, what's been kind of your maybe favorite event, uh, favorite uh, favorite memory from doing this for for so long? Well, I think it was moving here to the campus because we were out there uh, at the fairgrounds and we thought, you know, most of the people had never even been to Cal State campus. They had no idea what it, where it was. <laughs> they had no idea what it was. They had no idea anything. So I think that was the year that we all remember and we served a record amount that first year. We served over 3,600 uh, stakes that time and uh, we're always around the 3,000 mark right now. We're, so we're still trying to get back up there into the mid 3,000s. So we just hope people would come and, uh, and enjoy their university and their town. This is it. And uh, we try to make this money for the athletes out here so that sports can keep, uh, keep our name in the paper, so to speak. Keep your name in the paper, Cal State. But, you know, that, that's what we're all doing it for. And all these guys uh, all volunteer to do this with the same uh, thoughts in their mind. Awesome. Well, I'm going to let you get back to work because I know you got a lot of work to do. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks. Now let's talk about the secrets to the food success. All right, we're here with Mike, and Mike's got a specialty grilled job because this isn't the normal steaks. These are, you know, there's certain people they really like. They really like them well done, right, Mike? Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. Most people like a little rare, but some people like so. So your job is basically to burn it. Yep, they want me to ruin these, so I'm doing the best I can. So you have like the the most zero pressure job out here. Basically, yeah, with this grill. <laughs> so just and, and uh, how about uh, I guess uh, how much charcoal do are these things uh, these things burning through here? Oh wow, uh, we start out with four bags in every grill, and then we just add it as we go. All right. Well, uh, Mike's got Mike just gets to burn meat. All day. I could do. I could burn meat. So Mike, continue to burn to 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 well done these these steaks. I'll do, do my best. We are back uh, here with uh, what's your name? What's your name, sir? Anthony Leary. Anthony, uh, you're uh, you are you are working here. You got a hot grill. You got the steaks moving around now. What exactly? How do you make it perfect? What are the what's the what's the key to success here? Keep rotating it. Keep rotating it. Let it bleed a little bit. Then we'll flip it. For a couple minutes, take it off, and it's ready to go. What's kind of like start to finish time on one of these New York steaks? Depends on the thickness. It's um, it could be three minutes, five minutes. All right, we'll uh, we'll continue success on this. These look great, so uh, keep up the good work. All right, thank you very much. All right, what's your name? Uh, Kent. Kent. All right, so uh, you're 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 the you're the seasoned guy. What exactly are you uh, you doing here? I'm the last of the season. That everybody else is helping. I'm at the tail end. Uh, yeah, we we season it and uh, pre you know, for the, the evening and uh, good seasoning. So what do we got, just a little salt, pepper, or kind of kind of keep it simple? Oh, yeah, garlic and pepper and uh, oil. Garlic, pepper, and oil, you can't, you can't mess that up, right? No, nah, it comes out great. Real juicy. These steaks are really good. It had a little taste and uh, really juicy. Perfect. That's what I like to hear. So, well, I'm going to let you finish up. What do you do after you're done seasoning for the night? I'm going to cook. Going to cook, so it just keeps on going. All right, we'll keep going. Thank you very much. The steaks kept cooking, the people kept coming, and the event, once again, was a huge success. And there you have it, and thanks once again to all the folks that showed up to the 42nd Annual Spring Barbecue. Over 2,600 attendants, a great evening and a good fundraiser for the Roadrunner Scholarship Fund. We're taking a break. When we come back, Bill Kernan joins us in studio. We'll talk baseball, we'll talk his impending retirement, and uh, we'll talk playwriting. We, we've got it all. Stick around. It's Roadrunner Rundown. Save 50 to 90% with the Bakersfield Californians Daily Deal featured on Bakersfield.com. A daily deal is offered each weekday on services from local restaurants, dry cleaners, health and beauty services, retail shops, and local activities for the entire family. 
The Daily Deal is 100% local. Find these amazing deals only at dailydeal.bakersfield.com. Current Business Journal contains news and information from local business leaders and organizations. Topics include agriculture, health and medical, energy, real estate, and more. Visit currentbusinessjournal.com to find out how to subscribe or where to pick up a free copy. To inquire about advertising in the bi-monthly business journal, call 395-7586. Find us online on Facebook and Twitter, as well as on currentbusinessjournal.com. Brave and bold, silver and gold. We are on a mission. Aggie up. Our country just got a whole lot bigger. Mighty Wolverines of UVU. Join the herd. Lopes up. Bold moves, big season, grew up. We are the new gold standard. We will be champions. We are the Western Athletic Conference. The Roadrunner Scholarship Fund creates educational opportunities for over 300 student athletes at CSUB. By becoming a member and donating to the Roadrunner Scholarship Fund, you're not only helping the Roadrunners fund the scholarship needs of our teams, you're investing in the future. The Roadrunner Scholarship Fund isn't just developing student athletes. We're developing tomorrow's leaders from lessons learned during competition. For more information, log on to GoRunners.com slash donate and become a member of the Roadrunner Scholarship Fund. We are back here on Roadrunner Rundown. Thanks so much for joining us on the program. And, uh, well, we talked about it in the opening segment a little bit as uh, one of the news items from this past week is our head baseball coach, Bill Kernan, announced his retirement after the end of this uh, 2014 season. And he joins us now in studio. Coach, good to see you. How you doing? Great, as always. Well, uh, let's first talk about the most obvious question is, uh, you know, why now? What, what kind of were the factors that went to you deciding that this was going to be the last uh, season for you? It's mainly a decision about, uh, what I want to do next, and um, so I I just need to do that while I've uh, got some strength and breath and <laughs> some amount of energy and life left in me, and and uh, it could have been, you know, still a couple three years from now possibly, yeah. but I just felt that um, I go year by year with how I think <laughs> about things, and uh, so it was the end of this particular contract and, and uh, I'm going to be 66 August 1st, which is your official tire retirement yeah. age. So I kind of looked at all those things and thought, Oh, does that seem to make sense? And uh, the pull to get back uh, to New York is just too strong. You, you'd said in your press comment, you'd act a little bit like you were going to stay and then, and then you'd go a couple weeks and act like you were leaving and see which one felt better. And obviously, you know, the weeks where you were acting like this was it were more natural to you. Yes. I do that when I make big decisions and, and I felt very good uh, whenever I thought about it that mm -hmm. way. And I still do. Everything that's happened along the way, uh, I've, I've tried to gauge, including like the press conference the other day, okay, how did I feel about that? I feel good about that? Or am I up there going, what in the world am I talking about? Or, <laughs> um, and, I, you know, I, I felt very, uh, very right and very calm and very good about this decision. You talk about having an emotional attachment to the program and something that you kind of help build. How hard will it be once this is all said and done, given all the work you put in the last six years, to step away from, from something like this? When you think of it as being uh, for life, it, 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 it takes on a different meaning, and I haven't had really time to reflect on that yet. But yeah, that'll uh, that'll have an impact at some point. And right now, I'm still feeling like I'm in the middle of it because we have some things that uh, yeah. we, we think we're going to be able to still do. And uh, but yeah, it, it's uh, it's a little bit of a. You, actually, the day after the press conference, I had kind of a little downer type <laughs> of day. The uh -huh. next day, and you know, I just uh, I think that happens when yeah. you when you have a major thing go on, even if, whether even if it's a good or a bad or whatever, and, and it's over, there's a sort of a. Uh, a letdown a little bit. Sure, and I know there's still um, 
And I know a couple years ago you were, you were approached by, by Fullerton, but you signed an extension here. Did you kind of know when that happened a few years ago that, okay, this is where – you know, I'm going to retire. I'm gonna, when I yes. end my career, it's going to be here in Bakersfield. Yes, I knew that would be it, and regardless of how I stayed. I, I was That was going to be the end of any other jobs that I'd be up for, or that kind of thing. And so, you know, I knew then that that was going to be uh, where I, this would be where I'd finish. You know, I know there's still, you mentioned there's plenty to be done, and it's coming together a little bit piece by piece. But when you look back to year one, and now you look at year six, uh, are you amazed at the progress this program has made, not only from a competitive standpoint, the players you have, the, what your team is doing, but for where the field is at and, and where the program has kind of been from year one to, to year six now? We're proud of all of those things, and we've had a lot of help uh, from the community, and, and uh, particularly Tom Hart and the Fritches and Bill Lazzarini stepped up big for us in the mm-hmm. seating and, and several other people that have supported us uh, financially and, and other ways, but... Uh, I do have some disappointments uh, about not being uh, in the playoffs because I thought by the third year we would, and yeah. I, I think we were deserving uh, that year and uh, and last year. So to to have the circumstances come together that didn't allow that to happen has been the biggest disappointment. Uh, but but overall, yeah, we're 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 proud of where this thing's come. And you really had to sell a dream over the first few seasons. I mean, you uh, you know, I remember uh, associate head coach Jody Robinson said his favorite memory was when you basically showed him a, a pot of dirt and said, "This is where a field's going to be." Uh, when he when you brought him here, so obviously there was a lot of dream selling going on. But is it now easier to recruit with more in place, the facility being what it is, a conference affiliation? And, and so from year one to year six, I mean, how easier has that job gotten? It's uh, never easy. But it's better. Uh, we have more to to show, more to point to. Mm-hmm. We we now have some stories of guys that have come through the program, and we can say, look, we're not just uh, talking about things that aren't real. Here's some you know many examples of what's happened to guys that have come in here, and the recruiting process started with Coach Robinson that year, and mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know so he's been with me at, at, from the beginning and uh, uh, has obviously had at least as much impact as I've had on the, on the program. But as far as keeping local kids, I think that's gotten stronger. Yeah. Uh, I think guys are looking at it more as, wow, I, you know, I might stay in town and this looks like this might be the place for me to be. And we have several guys on the team now from Bakersfield, and we hope that continues. Yeah, you know, I know Max Carter said that when he was on this show. As he said, ever since I was a freshman in high school, I wanted to play baseball at CSUB. And, I, and that, that took me aback because he was one of the first four-year kids who went through all four years of his high school with the Roadrunners having a baseball program. So that was always on his radar. And so obviously you're seeing more of those kids stick around locally that – have grown up now with this program over the last six years. And we hope that that continues. I, I, I think that's a very important component to the, to the core of the, of the baseball team. You, you mentioned uh, you know, dealing with, uh, with the players and moving away from that aspect would be one of the hardest things that, that, uh, that, that, that you are going to have to deal with. But how does it make you feel when guys do go on to play pro ball or just go on to be professionals somewhere else and return to the program? And I mean, that must make you pretty proud to see their development. We have that going on. They, they uh, have surprised me a little bit. Uh, the, the guys keep coming back, and, and not just uh, once a year for five minutes. I mean, there's been some guys that have been coming back and working out in the fall and staying in Bakersfield and working here and uh, really, really staying connected to the program. So that's been big. The next big step will be one of them getting to the big leagues. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and then some other things can be said. What uh, What is going to be, and, and we'll, we'll keep you around for the next segment as well, but what would be your your sell to any potential coaches that, that want to take this job? I mean, what would you say to them as far as, you know, what you, they can expect if they, if they want to come to Bakersfield? I think that the job that needs to be done and – continued but also brought uh, forward even farther would be continued facility development Mm -hmm. and also uh, the community uh, I'd like to see the community particularly the baseball community particularly the youth baseball community be able to be more connected to the program Uh, some of that's our fault because we haven't had camps yet yeah and when that starts happening these guys will grow up from from young ages and and uh and be able to identify with the program. So that's the that's next, I think, uh, major thing that needs to happen. Uh, and then continued uh, efforts to, to improve the, the structure, the internal structure of the program, so that it can be able to compete at even higher level, which 
top 25 has always been our objective. Absolutely. Uh, Head coach Bill Kernan here on Roadrunner Rundown. We're going to step away and take a break. We'll get to the next segment. So uh, stick around, and we'll be back more with uh, Coach Kernan. We'll talk about uh, this year's team and, and what's next for him as well. We'll be right back. This is Roadrunner Rundown. Introducing TBC Mobile from the Bakersfield, California. The most complete news, sports, weather, video, opinion, and lifestyle coverage in Bakersfield and Kern County. It's the easiest way to stay up to date on all things local while on the go. Read it on your smartphone or tablet. Download now by searching Bakersfield, California in the Apple, Google, and Amazon app stores. Save 50 to 90% with the Bakersfield Californians Daily Deal featured on Bakersfield.com. A daily deal is offered each weekday on services from local restaurants, dry cleaners, health and beauty services, retail shops, and local activities for the entire family. The daily deal is 100% local. Find these amazing deals only at dailydeal.bakersfield.com. The Bakersfield Californian is a great read on the iPad. But did you know that the Bakersfield Californian is available on your Kindle Fire? Or how about Google's Nexus 7? The Nook? You bet. You can also read a full replica of the newspaper on your Android-powered smartphone, on Apple's iPhone, or on your laptop. We have a solution for any device. eEdition is free for subscribers, or just $7.99 a month. The Bakersfield Californian. We're everywhere and anytime. Subscribe today. Bakersfield.com. Kern Business Journal contains news and information from local business leaders and organizations. Topics include agriculture, health and medical, energy, real estate, and more. Visit kernbusinessjournal.com to find out how to subscribe or where to pick up a free copy. To inquire about advertising in the bi-monthly business journal, call 395-7586. Find us online on Facebook and Twitter, as well as on KernBusinessJournal.com. The Roadrunner Scholarship Fund creates educational opportunities for over 300 student athletes at CSUB. By becoming a member and donating to the Roadrunner Scholarship Fund, you're not only helping the Roadrunners fund the scholarship needs of our teams, you're investing in the future. The Roadrunner Scholarship Fund isn't just developing student athletes. We're developing tomorrow's leaders from lessons learned during competition. For more information, log on to GoRunners.com slash donate and become a member of the Roadrunner Scholarship Fund. We're back on Roadrunner Rundown. Thanks so much for joining us as we continue on the program. Keep talking baseball with our head coach, Bill Kernan, joining us uh, in studio. He announced his retirement earlier, or actually last week, but uh, still has saw some games to go. Runners will be at Seattle this weekend in conference play. I want to talk, uh, before we get back to baseball, I want to kind of talk about phase two of your, uh, of your life after you leave baseball. You're going to head back to New York and write and direct again. Did you recently have some opportunities that kind of arose and made you feel like now's the time to get back into that aspect? of your life not from there um my agent back there has been trying to market two of my, my two screenplays and and then i'll get back into some theater as well because directing is is uh, really a lot of fun and, mm -hmm. and it's just like coaching it, it is <laughs> you, you have actors instead of athletes you have rehearsals instead of practices you have auditions instead of recruiting and scouting you you know you have a budget you have uh, you know, a schedule, uh, and it, it's it's really the same thing. It's just different uh, uh, ball game. I was going to say, uh, you know, I, I, I found that came across this quote. This is from American novelist uh, uh, Paul Galgo, who wrote prior to the Yankees in 1941. He said, "No game in the world is as tidy and dramatically neat as baseball, with cause and effect, crime and punishment, motive and result, so cleanly defined, uh, so cleanly defined." 
So, I mean, obviously, th- so there is a little bit of parallels to what you're doing now and what you're, you know, want to be doing in the future with, uh, you know, with, with drama and, 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 and uh, writing. There very definitely is. And I didn't even realize that till I got involved in it. Uh, <laughs> the writing is completely different. That's, that's a very lonely, uh, you know, depressing, sometimes <laughs> mentally anguishing situation that's uh-huh. not as, uh, nearly as much fun. Now, uh, and, and you've written uh, what, how, many, how many plays so far? Uh, I've written 11, but okay. seven of them are full lengths. Seven and, are full lengths. And uh, uh, there's been seven productions of work that I had done in New York, uh, including some one acts. So uh, I'm going to get back and produce, reproduce a couple of those that, that were the most uh, successful and then um, see what else I can begin to write and come up with. And, and, it's, and it's not like, and people probably want to know, it's not like you're writing prior to the Yankees. You're, you're, talk about your work a little bit and, and describe that and kind of how, you know, what, what it's about. It's been noted for its uh, non-stereotypical women. <laughs> uh, each one of the ones that I've written have had a, a, the main uh, character to be uh, female, and some of them are a little edgy. <laughs> so, so I've, I've had, uh, you know, an, an attraction in my life, starting with my own mother, uh-huh. to those kinds of, of strong women. And that's what I find interesting. And, and for a man to write about that yeah. is, has been somewhat uh, unusual in people's minds. And I, uh, because the dialogue has to also be female. So I don't think of it that way. I just listen to what they're going to say and write it down. That's, that's really what you do when you, when you write a uh, dialogue. And, uh, at least if it's good, because if you try to come up with some idea that you think is clever, it'll it'll be bad. Yeah, uh, it'll be contrived. It'll be bad. It won't work. It just has to come from the gut. Wow! And uh, you're gonna go back to New York, which I know you said it's a city you just love. As a matter of fact, I think re- recently you had told somebody you you still live like on a New York schedule. You eat dinner at like ten o'clock at night. <laughs> you know, I mean, right? I mean, you don't sleep no, 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 the normal hours. Correct? Is that kind of the way? That's it's been? correct. Yeah, I used to go <laughs> about two two a.m. or so, and uh, I'm watching film and doing different things. Uh, it's the most uh, amazing place in the world, uh-huh. and uh, I used to visit all the time before I moved there, and and wanted to do that one day. I didn't think it would be as soon as it was, right? But uh, the energy there, it'll beat you up. It's a tough place. Yeah. It really is. But it's a challenge. And uh, there's just everything is there. Yeah. Uh, you can get anything you want. You could get an elephant delivered to your apartment <laughs> if, if you had enough money. Uh, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's an unbelievable place. You need to visit it if you have. Absolutely. No, I've been there once. I plan on going back for sure. Uh, so uh, that's going to be phase number two. I want to kind of still talk about this team. Got some work to do here. Um, won five your last seven. Uh, I want to go back to Saturday night, 7-6 win over New Mexico State. We were talking probably one of the, I don't know, top five games in the program's history, the way that thing panned out. I mean, that was pretty memorable. Very memorable. We showed our most grit and character on Saturday that we have the whole year. That was a that took every ounce of every guy yeah. to, to make that happen uh, with those three comebacks that we had to do. Uh, there's a famous saying in baseball, when you're in, you're out, and when you're out, you're in. Yeah. That game couldn't have been more <laughs> typical of that because you're never in or out. Yeah. So, and, and then the weekend was that way. As soon as you start thinking you're pretty good, then the baseball is going to step up and slap you down like it did to us on Sunday. Yeah. So you, you can't – that's why you never give up because – a ball can roll into our dugout, and, and a guy goes to second, and you know. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it, it's uh, it's a reflection of life. Uh, it reveals character, uh, and then you have some games where you get beat, like we did Sunday, like that. But then we did that to them on Friday. Right. So, uh, it, it's just a microcosm of of life. Do you think maybe a month ago, if you're in a game like that, maybe that this team maybe gives up on that game? They don't have the same amount of fight. Uh, I mean, if it was like a month, month and a half ago. Earlier, uh, look, you can practice everything, including, yeah. including mental preparation like we, we do probably more than anybody in the country, I think, with visualization, all these things I've learned from world-class athletes. But what you can't practice is, is experience. It's impossible. Right. You have to play. You have to go through game after game after game with somebody else on the other side of the field trying to beat you. And so that growth process is what you see happening. And that happened in 2012 to the team that won the WAC last year in, in 2013. And it's happening to this one. We've been trying to hope, we've been trying to get it to be sped up so it's not next yeah. year. And I'm beginning to see signs of that. I was going to say, I mean, you, you, you kind of like the way, I mean, even on Sunday, you guys are down 14-1 in the six. They didn't you, give up. And you needed, 
five runs to keep the game going. You scored six, and you cut the lead in half all of a sudden. I we, mean, we got together in the dugout at the start of that inning and said, "I don't know what's going to. I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. It's going to be tough to come back from this far." But you know what? We're not going to stop now. We're not going to let them run rule us in right. seven innings. And right. they, they rallied. Yeah, absolutely. And so you obviously got to like the way this team is playing at, at this point of the year with one week to go in conference play. Yes. Uh, we we need to build on what we just did. And I th- we, we showed some character in Colorado, too. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, so we'll see what happens in Seattle. I think that's going to be tough. We don't know how much we have to do to, to get to the two seed. There'll be some, we'll need some help from somebody. Right. Uh, it's still possible. If you're not the two seed, it doesn't really matter what seed you are, yeah. because you're going to play somebody like you know uh, in the middle, like yeah. like that. And then and then you play, I guess, one of the one or two seeds if you win. I'm not sure. I haven't seen the bracketing. Um, so I don't know. The pitching decisions will be interesting. Aikenhead may not throw the first game. Right, right, and that it kind of got that double elimination factor, which sort of sort of makes it all interesting. A couple guys that have stepped up recently, Solomon Williams, to me, seems like a new man. I mean, all of a sudden he's this angry, snarling beast at the plate. He's going to swing as hard as he can. He's going to hit the ball, going to run into a few. Uh, he wasn't like that a month ago. I mean, what, what's kind of changed with him? Well, I think he's a, he epitomizes what's happening with this team. Sooner or later, you get tired of, uh, of having bad things happen to you if you're a competitive athlete, and then there comes a time when you just go, you know what, that's enough. Yeah. I'm going to get this turned around. And that's what's going on with him individually and with some other guys individually and with us as a team. That's why failure is sometimes your best – road to success yeah. because if you get enough of it and you get enough uh, stuff shoved down your throat long enough if you're in, made of anything pretty soon you, you're you going to just say you know what i've had that yeah now it's my turn yeah and and they, is that kind of the same thing with with oscar and i mean he's lifted his batting average nearly 75 points in a matter of a week and a half uh he's finally kind of letting loose what sort of change he, he was very frustrated i think he probably was trying too hard because he wasn't drafted last year he's going to get drafted somebody's mm-hmm. going to give him a chance yeah. and and we've talked to him about that i think he's comfortable with that now and then once he got uh, moving a little bit and i put him in the back in the leadoff spot uh i think he's just more relaxed i think he's kind of fought through the frustrations and the uh and those kinds of things and he sees that it's coming to the end and and he caught fire absolutely and let's talk pitching we've seen some big improvements amongst some guys recently well in the bullpen what's kind of your goal for the conference tournament as far as the pitching staff goes i mean how many guys you want ready and able to battle you know in, in, in your bullpen i always stay within my top six or seven guys even during the regular year and that would certainly be the case uh, here, if you go below that in a tournament, then something bad's happened. Yeah. And uh, but it's double elimination this time, so there's a lot of other different decisions that get to be made. But we feel very good about our pitching depth compared to the rest of the conference. I mean, there's some good pitching out there, but nobody's got more depth than we do. So if yeah. we get into some kind of a dogfight that gets down in the bullpen, like we did the other night, we bring Rogowski in and he pitches the game of his life, and they, <laughs> yeah. and they didn't have somebody to match that. Right. And so you, but you've also said before. I guess I guess last year's conference term a little bit different. But you'd said if you're a starter, be ready to go because you're going to go the whole time. <laughs> That's the number one objective is to have a complete game yeah. and, and to save pitching for later, particularly in a tournament thing. Because if we can make it through the week, believe me, there'll be some things happening at the end of the week that'll require some some real character, and you have to dig down deep. And we're dinged up a little bit. Yeah, Huff's got a little knee deal, and uh, so does uh, Pierce. We've got the the finger uh, fracture from uh, Hind, but he's going to play. Right. Uh, he, everybody has that this time of year, but we we've got some uh, we've got some things to be able to fight through. You like uh, you look at this league though. You've beaten everybody in the league at some point uh, throughout the year. Um, no matter what the seed, I mean, you still got to feel pretty good about the fact that you know your team can beat anybody in this league. We can. We we if we're playing as well as we can next week, uh, we'll be we'll be in the fight. And, uh, you know, I, it, maybe it's our turn to, uh, to disappoint somebody because, uh, <laughs> you know, I know how that is. And so if I don't know who's going to – I guess Sac State's got a game lead over Grand Canyon. They're not going. So if Sac State's the one seed, uh, I, I still don't uh, think that that's right. I think they should go. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we're going to try to make sure that doesn't happen. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, hopefully this year uh, all the ducks that are in a row and you got uh, the double elimination format should help as well. So uh, sounds sounds good. And, Coach, uh, good luck this weekend at uh, at Seattle. And then we'll see you in Mesa in a week or change. Thank you. Uh, let me take this opportunity to thank you for everything. Uh, you know, during my time I've been here, the attention you've paid and, and the coverage has been great. 
Well, I appreciate it and uh, happy to do it. Uh, believe me, like I said during a press conference, I mean, we're the ones who get to travel around and play baseball. So, yeah. you know, not uh, not a bad gig. Not a bad thing. <laughs> not a bad deal at all. All right, head coach Bill Kernan here on Roadrunner Rundown. We're going to step away and take a break. And uh, Jerry Cleary, our new assistant men's soccer coach, set to join us next. Stick around. This is Roadrunner Rundown. Bakersfield Californian is a great read on the iPad. But did you know that the Bakersfield Californian is available on your Kindle Fire? Or how about Google's Nexus 7? The Nook? You bet. You can also read a full replica of the newspaper on your Android-powered smartphone, on Apple's iPhone, or on your laptop. We have a solution for any device. E-Edition is free for subscribers, or just $7.99 a month. The Bakersfield Californian. We're everywhere and anytime. Subscribe today. Bakersfield.com. Introducing TBC Mobile from the Bakersfield, California. The most complete news, sports, weather, video, opinion, and lifestyle coverage in Bakersfield and Kern County. It's the easiest way to stay up to date on all things local while on the go. Read it on your smartphone or tablet. Download now by searching Bakersfield, California in the Apple, Google, and Amazon app stores. The new book is out. That was easy. I would title this thing sort of a description of what raising children is like. You know, that was easy. I've been writing columns now for about 25 years. Writing has always been a conversation. You're taking somebody by the hand for three or four minutes and you're not letting go. The new book, that was easy. Nothing easy about any of this, but we've had some fun and I hope you guys will have some fun looking at this book. The Roadrunner Scholarship Fund creates educational opportunities for over 300 student athletes at CSUB. By becoming a member and donating to the Roadrunner Scholarship Fund, you're not only helping the Roadrunners fund the scholarship needs of our teams, you're investing in the future. The Roadrunner Scholarship Fund isn't just developing student athletes, we're developing tomorrow's leaders from lessons learned during competition. For more information, log on to GoRunners.com slash donate and become a member of the Roadrunner Scholarship Fund. Welcome back to Roadrunner Rundown. My thanks to Bill Kernan for joining us in the last segment. The last couple segments are retiring head baseball coach, but they still got some work to do this weekend at Seattle and then at the uh, Western Athletic Conference Tournament next week. Uh, keep checking out GoRunners.com for the updated brackets and all that stuff we should know after uh, after Saturday. I want to welcome to the program now. He is uh, one of our new assistant men's soccer coaches, and uh, he comes to us by way of Martin Methodist. And I uh, want to join in the program now, Jerry Cleary. Jerry, good to see you. How you doing? Good, good. Thank you. Thanks well, for having me. First of all, uh, how have things been for you last couple months? You know, in Bakersfield, uh, making you know making the transition here out west. Yeah, Bakersfield's a great city. It reminds me a lot of Tennessee, and um, I can see why people don't move a lot. It's moving's <laughs> difficult. It's not easy. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Now you came from Martin Methodist, where you won last year's NAIA national championship. You've also won two national titles on the women's teams there because you were coaching both. Uh, was it just kind of time to move on after winning all those titles and accolades at the NAIA level for you? Yes, yeah, it's we. I've been there eleven years, and that was my first job out of graduate school. So. It's sort of, I needed a new challenge when I was coaching the women and I coached the men for three years and then we just decided, me and my wife, or my wife and I decided we just needed a new city, something new. And then 
when Coach Grant called and said, hey, come on to California, I don't think you can turn it down. Yeah, I, I was going to say, it's a little easier here dealing uh, uh, with, uh, you know, you played for Coach Grant at, at Lambeth, correct? correct? Yes, yes. And yes. Uh, so was that kind of obviously part of the reason you wanted to come here and coach with him now? Yes, well, I've looked around. I could just say he was the best coach I had in college. <laughs> um, yeah, he brought me from Ireland when I was 18. So it's funny, like 18 years later, now he's bringing me to California. But yeah, everyone said when you move, it's best to move with a friend. So Coach Grant is, was one of my role models, and now he's one of my best friends. So it works out works out perfect. What was, what was more of a culture shock, moving from Ireland to the United States, from Tennessee to California? <laughs> um, I guess Ireland to Tennessee because... Honestly, I had one bag when I moved <laughs> and Tennessee, Tennessee humidity in August. I used to run from tree to tree and hide in the shadows. It's so warm there coming from Ireland where it rains all the right, time. Right, right. Well, you seem to transition okay. And uh, now you get a chance to, uh, I know you dealt with two programs in Martin Methodist. So is it a little bit, uh, a little bit less stressful only with one team to worry about as an assistant now here at uh, CSUB? I don't know whether it's less stressful. Coaching is stressful, but um, <laughs> it's good. It's, it's just a new challenge. You know, it's good that me and uh, our coach and I are getting our feet wet at the same time. And we're both getting used to California and how things are done and, yeah, it's a, it's a big challenge, so it's hopefully we do what we're supposed to do. Well, you guys had a uh, – I mean, it seemed like you had a pretty successful spring. Uh, give me your thoughts on that, the way the team played in some of the spring exhibition matches and obviously your spring training as well. Yeah, yeah, the lads are excellent. We're really fast. It's a different style of football, soccer out here, so we're getting used to that, and we really like it. It's – yeah, it's, it's new and refreshing to both of us. We drew at Santa Barbara. We were undefeated in the spring, so it, it's – we were learning about what our team is about, and they showed us what they're about. So, it's yeah, the, the future looks good. How would you kind of describe your styles? as, as co I mean, look, I've seen some of the game film from the spring. It seems like you're aggressive offensively. I mean, they're, you're shooting the ball a lot. Um, is, is that kind of the style of your, of your team? Yes, we are. We're not the tallest team. So we have, we're fast and technical. So we have to go at our strengths, and I think that's what the coaches previous to us did too. You can't teach height, yeah. which you can teach aggression, <laughs> aggression and speed. And so I think that's the way we've got to keep going, too. Awesome. Well, uh, and of course, your season will get going for real in August now. Between now and then, you guys have some camps going on, and that's going to be a big push. Uh, the CSUB, first of all, the soccer camp, uh, which is going to be the first one. That's going to be in June 2nd through the 6th. Uh, your first camp here in Bakersfield, but you've run camps all over the place. So uh, what can folks kind of expect uh, if they want to get their kids signed up for soccer camp? Well, it's, I guess it's probably what we would say. It's the best camp in America. <laughs> so come. It's going to be a good day. It's, it's going on the same time as the World Cup, so... It's going to be soccer fever for the month of June and a little bit of July just because the World Cup is going to be on three games a day. It's going to be on for, what, six weeks, five, yeah. six weeks. So. Yeah. Excellent. And uh, what what kind of – what will the kids learn? What are you guys looking to teach during that uh, – you know, during the – you have a couple different sessions, but, uh, you know, what do you guys kind of focus on as far as teaching with, with the kids? Well, the big thing with kids is that they have fun and they go home loving the game of soccer. So we hope they have fun, and then we hope that every kid leaves camp with – knowing two or three things that they didn't know when they came in. Awesome. And uh, boys and girls, what do your ages range from normally? Yes, we're going from 4 to 16. Wow. So it should be apparently before the camps have been huge, the all sports camp, which covers all sports, is supposed yeah. to be big too. So we'll see. We've got another two or three more weeks of sign up before our first camp. So Awesome. And uh, the best part is, I mean, it, it, here's what here's my always sell to parents, what I sell them with. Look, you can drop your kids off. They're going to literally run around all day long. They're going to get home and crash. I mean, they're going to fall asleep, and you get a nice night of peace. And I mean, really, you, these kids move around the entire time. So you guys are really providing a – not only are you keeping an eye on the kids for a day during the summer or several days during the summer, but you're pretty much, uh, you're pretty much tiring them out for the rest of the evening. Yeah, you're, you're basically describing it as glorified babysitting, Corey. <laughs> Thank you. No, it's good. Like the old sports camp, they have cycling. Like the kids get to cycle for yeah. a little bit around campus and stuff. It's, it's going to be – it's pretty neat. I'm excited. I've never done an old sports camp before, so it seems like – like they, 
it runs pretty good. And imagine being a kid and being swimming and playing baseball yeah. and basketball. And we, uh, we showed some pictures of uh, the floor hockey. They go in the old gym and they yeah. tear that place up and they, yeah. you know, they, uh, they, 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 they play a little floor hockey. And, you know, that's, that's always, like I said, they're just, they're going to be tired, which is going to be great for the parents. So, yeah, yeah. especially in the summer. Yeah. <laughs> a- absolutely. Jerry Cleary, our guest here on Roadrunner Rundown, assistant uh, coach with men's soccer. And you guys also have uh, this Thursday, uh, Brains of Bakersfield. Uh, this is an event. Uh, this is the uh, trivia event of the year. You guys kind of inherited this event from the previous coaches, but uh, it's very popular. So your first chance at running this deal, and uh, obviously you've got to be looking forward to this. Yes, uh, Mark and Keith in the athletic department are, have really gone with it, and um, Richie and I have helped them a, a little bit. But it, it seems well supported by the community. I think they had 19 teams last year, and I think we're up to 24, 25 wow. this year. So. People are looking forward to it, and I guess with the success of the spring barbecue last week, we're hoping to have another successful event. Excellent. And uh, you, you did you get a chance to go to the barbecue? Yes, the barbecue was awesome. Well, well, yeah, what did you think about that? Yeah, it was, uh, very, it was good. It was good. <laughs> Coming from Tennessee, barbecue, we're still debating that this – yeah, that mindset, California it's not, barbecue. Yeah, see, like the California, like our barbecue isn't like we're gonna have we're gonna have world class barbecue. We're gonna serve you good food, but it's more about what happened after the food with the dancing, the 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 beer and the the band. It was more, I guess, California barbecue is more fo- focused on the event around the food. Tennessee, yeah. it's probably focused on the food. Yes, the food. They yeah. love their food. <laughs> so we're kind of doing it the other way around, but uh, it's it's uh, successful nonetheless. Uh, people want to register for camps, how can they get a hold of you? They can um, go to our website, gorunners.com, and they can find the information there, and then they can just email it to me or call me. Awesome. Well, we've had a lot of kids sign up now, so hopefully there's two or three more weeks left to register so hopefully we get a few more kids in excellent all right well uh, coach good to see you and uh, welcome to bakersfield and good luck with the camps and uh, we'll talk to you again soon cheers thanks for having me uh, all right you. jerry cleary here on roadrunner rundown and again uh, you can check those uh, details out online at gorunners.com all the summer camps this year uh, as well presented by uh, the good folks at mcdonald's a great new partnership we'll be talking about a little bit uh, more in the weeks to come but uh, a good new partner with roadrunner athletics and uh, the camps we have available uh, se- several camps including the soccer and all sports camp more information available online at gorunners.com you can also get archived versions of this program anytime online at gorunners.com com as well. Hey, make sure you join us next week on the program because it is going to be our 2014 Rowdies nomination show. Yes, the Rowdies are coming on June the 5th and we are going to be nominating and unveiling the nominees for all of our, uh, what is it, 17 award categories, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we're going to have those nominees debuted live on the show next week so make sure you join uh, myself and our athletic director jeff Konya will uh, be on board as well as we uh, we nominate the 2014 rowdies and of course that event free coming up on june 5th at the fox theater make sure you join us for a great night as uh, rowdies goes to the movies so that will be coming up next week with our nomination show right here on roadrunner rundown follow us anytime on twitter and instagram at csub athletics check us out on facebook facebook.com slash csub roadrunners have a great great week folks we will catch you next week on our rowdy's nomination show right here on roadrunner rundown on bakersfield.com and go runners.com